Okay, so I've already talked about the urea cycle twice before, once with the sort of overview video and a second one with some more details. But in this one, I'm going to include the actual enzymes of the cycle as well as how um, it how the urea cycle fits with the glutamate dehydrogenase and glutaminase enzymes that we just learned a little while ago. Um, okay, so here we're starting off with uh, glutamine and with glutamate, which are both amino acids that are coming in uh, with with these amino groups, right? With these nitrogens or with this amide nitrogen here. Basically, they're coming in carrying nitrogens from elsewhere. Okay? They're carrying nitrogens that we need to excrete. So they're going to go from the cytosol of the liver into um, the mitochondrial matrix. Okay. And the glutamine specifically will be turned into glutamate in the mitochondrial matrix of the liver uh, via the glutaminase reaction, sort of hydrolyzing off that uh, amide nitrogen. So that amide nitrogen will end up as an ammonium ion right here. And then um, the glutamine, upon losing this amide nitrogen, becomes glutamate. Now that glutamate can undergo the glutamate dehydrogenase reaction. And of course that'll produce NADH or NADPH as, um, as well as alpha ketoglutarate here. And it'll also free up an ammonium ion. Okay, so we're basically getting the nitrogens from the glutamine and from the glutamate ending up here. Now, not all of that glutamate will undergo the glutamate dehydrogenase reaction. Some of it might undergo, uh, and actually will undergo, a transamination with oxaloacetate. Um, this is specifically going to be catalyzed by aspartate aminotransferase, and that's because oxaloacetate here is the alpha keto acid of aspartate. So aspartate will be produced here, and we'll see why that's important in just a moment. Okay. So the idea, though, is that we're going to basically rip off the nitrogens from the glutamine and from the glutamate and they're going to end up either here as free ammonium ion in the mitochondrial matrix or on aspartate okay or i should say and and or okay now we have this free ammonium ion here and that is going to be turned into carbamyl phosphate here by adding a bicarbonate or carbon dioxide depending on how you look at it um, and we're also going to invest two ATPs here, and we'll get out two ADPs and an inorganic phosphate, and then one of the phosphate groups will end up right here on carbamoyl phosphate. And uh, this is going to be catalyzed by carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1, which is actually um, the committed step um, when it comes to going through the urea cycle, and it is allosterically regulated, and we'll see that um, some more details on that in the next video. Okay, so then we actually have the urea cycle. The carbamyl phosphate is ready to go, and it is going to combine with ornithine, where the first step of the urea cycle is actually happening in the mitochondrial matrix. So we're going to start off over here with ornithine, um, and the ornithine is going to be converted into citrulline, where this portion of the carbamyl phosphate is going to attach to ornithine, ornithine's uh, side chain amino group and we'll get citrulline, which looks like this. So this is this portion here, right, is coming from the carbamoyl phosphate. Okay. This first step of the urea cycle is catalyzed by an enzyme called ornithine transcarbamoylase. Okay. Now, once we have that citrulline, that citrulline is going to exit the mitochondrial matrix out into the cytosol where the rest of the urea cycle will occur. Okay. So now we've got this citrulline out here over to the top right. And then we're going to have the second step of the urea cycle. That's actually broken up into parts A and B. And they're both going to be catalyzed by arginosuccinate synthetase. Okay. So the synthetase is going to produce arginosuccinate, which we see here. And part, in part A of the reaction, we're going to um, add an ATP, where the, um, the AMP portion ends up on... Uh, attached to the citrulline and the pyrophosphate falls off. So we get that AMP portion there attached 
to the citrulline to become the citrulio a citrulio amp intermediate um which is going to join is going to have aspartate it, it's the citrulline amp is activated such that aspartate can come in and basically take take um the spot of this amp portion okay so um where did this aspartate come from specifically well it came from the aspartate that we created back in the mitochondrial matrix up here right there via that transamination reaction that aspartate is going to come out into the cytosol to be a part of this reaction. Okay, so it's gonna um, replace the AMP, the AMP will fall off, and will produce um, arginosuccinate. Okay, so now we've got this nitrogen of aspartate attached here. All right, we already had these two nitrogens already there, which are these two here. Okay, so let's get rid of those circles. Okay. So now we've got arginosuccinate, this portion of the molecule being the uh, part that's pretty much arginine, uh, and this portion right here being the succinate portion. Okay, and that portion is actually going to fall off in the next step as uh, a fumarate producing arginine here. The rest will become an arginine. And uh, that is going to be catalyzed by arginosuccinase. So it's going to cut arginosuccinate into arginine and fumarate and that fumarate can be converted into malate by an enzyme called cytosolic fumarase it's just fumarase um, just in the cytosol and this is important because this malate can go back into the uh, mitochondrial matrix and go through the um, the TCA cycle right and go through the TCA cycle to give uh, some NADH, which can give us some energy. Okay. All right. Um, so then this arginine that is produced in this third step here, this arginine is going to be hydrolyzed. We're going to have this portion out here hydrolyzed off as urea. And of course that urea can be safely excreted in the urine in the urine safely excreted in the urine and the rest of the molecule ends up regenerating ornithine okay and that is that that fourth step there of the urea cycle is catalyzed by arginase and of course once we make that your that uh that urea and that ornithine that ornithine can go back into the mitochondrial matrix for basically um, another round of the urea cycle with another carbon oils phosphate. Okay. So that's hopefully a, a better big picture view of everything that's going on as far as the urea cycle and things that kind of lead up to it. Anyway, I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you and happy studying.